If you watched our video until now, you know how to fight against procrastination, organize your different tasks, create your workspace and find motivation to study. In this and the next video, we're going to help you to optimize your learning sessions. Today, we'll discuss the first decisions you're gonna have to make, which are about the length, the contents and distribution of your learning session. A possible differentiation between learning strategies is between masked and distributed learning. Following the strategy of masked learning, you study and repeat the topic in one long session. Practicing distributed learning on the other hand, you split the session and add a time gap between the intake session and the repetition. This added time gap is referred to as spacing effect. For example, practicing distributed learning, a person studies the basics of the theorem of Pythagoras once and after a delay, the person repeats the fundamentals. In the condition of practicing the mass learning, the person repeats the basics again and again without a break. You may wonder which of these strategies you should choose. In the history of research about learning, the results point strongly towards distributed learning. This trend even continues over different learning material. But why is that the case? A theoretical explanation is the study phase retrieval hypothesis. Through the delay between the learning session of one topic and the recap of the learned information, the difficulty for the retrieval of the information was increased. Through the increased difficulty, the subsequent memory improved. But watch out, after some amount of time, you will reach a point of diminishing returns. At this point the negative sides of the increased difficulty on remembering the information as the dismal failure on retrieve the information may outweigh the benefits. The optimal gap between the information intake and the recap session depends on the timing of the test. If the test occurs to be in the distant future, the time gap should be larger than if the test was in a few days. In the research of Sepeda and his team the optimal time gap by a test delay from 6 months after repetition session was 28 days. When the test occurs to be 10 days after the repetition session the optimal time gap was 1 day. As a tip, it's better to exceed the optimal time gap than to design it too short. The benefit from the delay is at its greatest by the optimal time gap. Exceeding that optimal time gap reduces the gain less than undershooting. If you nevertheless happen to be in the circumstances that you're running out of time, short breaks of seconds to minutes still produce a small spacing effect. We hope we could help you optimize your learning sessions. In the next video we'll give you some tips for the effective use of learning strategy. In the meantime, leave us a like and follow us on Instagram and YouTube.